Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all going well. Today's video is about how I got a 99.5 ATAR last year in year 12 and specifically how I studied. So I have already filmed a video on things that I did, just like general tips um, to get a 99 ATAR, how to get a 99 ATAR. So I'll link that video up here. But this video is specifically about how I studied. So from the time that I learned the information in class to the time um, of like the exams the end of the year how I like learnt and understood and studied the content um, to get a good result in those exams at the end of the year so that's what this video is focusing on um, specifically like how I studied and yeah what I did to get a 99.5 ATAR so yeah I graduated from year 12 last year in 2019 with a 99.5 ATAR and um, before you ask because I, <laughs> um, on my last video I got asked so so many questions about now what I'm doing for university so I'm going to university in the US in September this year I'm due to start studying at Yale University and I don't know what I'm studying yet because in the US the US system is quite different to Australia you don't actually have to decide what you're studying yet you don't even have to apply for a degree like you don't apply for a degree in a certain area you just apply to the university um, so yeah I'll be at Yale in the US but I don't know what I'm studying I just wanted to put that out there because on my last video about how I got a 99 ATAR that was like the most frequently asked question. Okay, um, so I wrote all the notes for this video on my phone here, so if I look down, like, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, okay, so, um, first, obviously, we would learn the content in class, so, um, at the start of each topic, so first I'm going to talk about, like, how I study for each topic, and then the end of topic test, and then at the end of the video I will talk about how I studied for the exams at the end of the year, like, the big exams. Um, so, yeah. First, for each topic, at the start of each topic, we'd like start learning the content in class, obviously. Um, and I'd come home and I would go through all of that content that we learnt that day and make notes on it. So this is the first kind of tip, is to make your notes as you go. So you learn content in class that day, come home, go through the information and make your notes that night. And as you're going through the information, if you don't understand anything or you're not sure um, exactly of something, then make sure you go and see your teacher the next day, um, if you can, or not the day after, but like as soon as you can, go see your teacher and make sure to get that clarified and keep asking and asking them questions until you completely understand what it is that you didn't understand. So yeah, most days after school I would come home and make my notes on what we had learnt that day and then the next day when we learnt more information um, I would come home that day and add to my notes. So I'd keep adding to my notes, adding to my notes, adding to my notes as we learnt the content through the topic. So by the end of the topic, um, is my camera wonky? Um, yeah. No, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, by the end of the topic, I would then have notes on the whole topic because I'd been making them as we went. And by, by when we like learnt the last thing, I'd make notes on that. Um, and then I had notes for the whole topic, whereas some people didn't make their notes as they went along. And then when we got to the end of the topic, <coughs> when we got to the end of the topic, they would make their whole notes just then, um, right before the topic test. But I found it a lot better to make your notes as you go along because number one, the information that you've learned is like very fresh in your mind. Um, so you're like making notes on something you've just learned that day. And number two, that's like a lot of stress to do just before the topic test. Like you want to be by that stage doing practice questions and like just making sure you know everything on your notes, not actually writing your notes. So yeah, that's what I did. I made my notes um, as we went through the topic and how I made my notes. I get a lot of questions on this. I basically... Um, would pull up the syllabus document and I just make my notes based on the syllabus dot points. Um, I will make a whole separate video on how I made my notes for year 12 but I do have lots of videos on my channel as well about how I make my notes. I've got like heaps of note taking series videos on my channel where I like flip through my notes for all of my different subjects and I am selling all of my ATAR notes for year 11 and 12. Oh so I did um, economics, chemistry, maths methods, maths specialist and English and I am selling my notes for all of those subjects um, for year 11 11 and 12 so if you want to buy any of them then email me at tiachitty17 at gmail.com or dm me on instagram at tia.chitty um yeah so i am selling them but what was i saying oh yeah i made them basically based on the syllabus um but i do have a bunch of videos on my channel flipping through them and talking about how i made them and i will make another video in the future as well because that's another question i get asked all the time 
Okay, so also as we were going through the topic and as I was making my notes each day, I would also memorize what I needed to memorize as I went along rather than leaving all the memorization until the end of the topic because then again that just, you're like memorizing and making notes at the end of the topic instead of like actually studying and doing practice questions for the topic test. So I would memorize the things I needed to memorize like now, as soon as you know them, memorize them don't wait until just before the test and also because memorization is a lot better and it will stay in your head a lot better which will help you for the end of year exam um if you do it over a longer period of time rather than like cramming your memorization so yeah i would start memorizing things kind of pretty much as soon as we learnt them and pretty much as soon as like I knew that was something that I would need to memorise, yeah, I'd just start memorising them, um, look, cover, write, check, using flashcards. Um, I actually have a whole video on how I memorise things, so I'll link that up here as well. Um, but yeah, that's just on my channel, so you can go check that out if you have trouble with memorisation. Um, but yeah, I would memorise things as I went along. Okay, and the next thing I would do is practice questions. Lots and lots of practice questions, but only do the practice questions after you've studied and understood the content first. I actually got a DM on Instagram the other day asking if it's worth doing practice questions without like fully knowing the content and I was like no you're literally wasting those practice questions if you do them without studying and learning and understanding the content first. So that's why you need to like make your notes as you go along and understand things as you go along and memorize things as you go along so then you can actually also do practice questions as you go along because you need to do those things before you can do practice questions to actually like do practice questions effectively but I would yeah I'd recommend like doing practice questions as you go along for the like specific parts of the topic that you're learning you can find them in your textbook or your teacher might give you some but yeah definitely doing practice questions as you go along practice 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 questions are like the best thing you can do but you do need to make sure you know the content first um but yeah i'd also do them as we went along so often like at my school our teachers would give us homework of practice questions so i would just do them like every couple of nights when we were given homework or if they didn't give us homework then i would just like find my own practice questions and do my own practice questions um every couple of nights so yeah you don't need to do the practice questions for every single subject every single night but make sure you're doing them like a couple of times a week Okay, so that's what I did as we went through the topic, and then once we're at the end of the topic, then you have like your end of topic test. Okay, so once you're at the end of the topic, you should have your notes for that whole topic that you've been writing as you go along, and you should have hopefully been memorizing things as you go along as well, and you should understand everything because if you didn't, you should have asked your teacher along the way. So you have a good set of notes and a pretty good understanding of the topic. Then what you do is you condense your notes. So this was a really, really, really big and important study technique that I used was condensing and condensing and condensing my notes. I would have 10 or even like 15 pages of notes for a topic, like A4 pages of fully written out notes for a topic and I would go through them all and condense them onto one page. Yes one page. If you can't condense them onto one page, then condense them onto two pages, and then condense those two pages onto one page. Everything can fit on one page. I condensed the whole of Year 12 Chemistry, both Units 3 and 4 of Year 12 Chemistry, all of it onto one A3 piece of paper. So you can condense each topic onto one A4 piece of paper. You can. And this was such an important thing, and I have made videos on this in the past on my channel, so you can go check them out. But condensing and condensing and condensing your notes is so important because it helps you focus on the most important things of the topic. It shows you how the whole topic interrelates to each other and it really like improves your understanding of the whole topic and how everything's connected. And it also really, really helps with your memorization because you're, you're reading through all of your notes and then trying to condense them onto one piece of paper. Like by going through the act of doing that, it really helps with your memorization and understanding of the topic because you're going through it so many times and writing it out again and going through it. And I don't know, it just really, really, really helps. And then also at the end of the year, that means if you've like condensed all of your notes for each topic onto one page. At the end of the year, you'll have a bunch of one page summaries for each topic that you can go through really quickly um, without having to go through like your 10 pages of notes for every single topic. You just have like a bunch of one page summaries, which I found super, super helpful. So yes, condensing, condensing, condensing your notes onto one page. And if you do want to purchase um, any of my ATAR notes, I will 
like in those notes is included all of my one page summaries and then all of my like longer versions of my notes as well so like all of the notes I wrote are in those and you will get my like A3 um piece of paper where I condense the whole of chemistry onto one A3 piece of paper as well so like that's all included in my notes just an FYI um but yeah <laughs> condensing 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 your notes um is a really important thing to do and I would do this at the end of the topic before the topic test instead of writing my whole notes at the end of the topic I would already have them all written and I would instead condense them onto one piece of paper Okay, and then it depends on the subject, but this is more for like economics and chemistry. I would do like look, cover, write, check, look, cover, write, check until everything that needs to be memorised is 100% memorised. Like I know you've been doing this as you go through the topic, but you should do it at the end of the topic as well because <laughs> it's important to have things that you need to have memorised, memorised. Um, but this isn't so important for maths because there's not as many things to be um, memorised. But <laughs> yeah, um, and then after you've like absolutely got everything committed to memory and you're going to have to keep like practicing and going through the look, cover, write, check every couple of days as well because otherwise you'll forget things. But also then at the end of the topic I would do a bunch of practice papers and practice questions um, for that topic. So practice, 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 practice tests, practice papers, practice questions. Heaps of practice questions are like really, really important. And there's no point doing practice questions if you don't mark them. So once you've done a practice paper, mark it and then go through it and when you've got a question wrong, like look at the work solution and make sure you understand what you got wrong and make sure that if you got that question again, you would be able to get it right. And if you can't and if you don't completely understand, then make sure you go ask your teacher. I would always put like page flags on my questions that I got wrong and I didn't understand the correct answer. And I would go to my teacher the next day and go through all of the page flag questions and make sure I got all of them answered and that I understood everything and that if I got it again, I would get it right. And then sometimes it would come up again in my topic test and I'd be able to get it right because I'd gone through it. But if you just do the practice paper and get it wrong and don't do anything about it, then if that question comes up again in your test or in your exam at the end of the year, then you're probably going to get it wrong again. So there's literally no point in doing the practice questions and the practice papers unless you actually mark them and like go through what you got wrong and learn from it. Like it's a learning experience. If you're not learning from it, then there's no point in doing it. And yeah, then I would have my topic test after I'd gone through my notes, condensed them, memorized everything, done practice papers, done more practice papers, done more practice papers. I would have my topic test um, and then I'd do it all again for the next topic and again and again and again. Isn't school fun? We love year 12. We love ATAR. Yay. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what I did before exams at the end of the year and it's kind of pretty similar to what I did before tests but just kind of on like a bigger scale and extended over a longer period of time because we'd have like more time to study for exams than we would have to study for tests. So before exams, at the end of the year before, or WACE exams or VCE or HSC exams or whatever, um, I would have had, I would have all of my notes um, from all of the topics for that subject that I'd studied during the year. So I'd have all of my notes and I would also have all of my one page summaries for each of the topics for that subject. And then what I would do is get all of those one page summaries and condense all of them onto one A3 piece of paper and then I would just have one A3 piece of paper with all of the information I needed to know for that subject. Now this is, it is hard to condense all of the information you've learnt throughout the year onto one A3 piece of paper per subject but it is doable. You can do it for every single subject. Or well, the only subject I couldn't do it for was economics because economics has so much content. So I did two A3 pieces of paper for economics, one for unit three and one for unit four. So I will allow that. You can do an A3 for unit three and an A3 for unit four, but you can't do any more than that. No more than one A3 piece of paper per unit for each subject. Um, and so that's just, again, condensing, condensing, condensing. And that means that you're going through all of your notes from all of the topics throughout the year and going through all of that information, picking out the super, super important bits and condensing and condensing it. 
um, and that the act of doing that is really beneficial for you before your exam because it means you're going through all of the stuff that you learned throughout the year and you're also focusing on the important bits and seeing how all of the topics link together and seeing how all the topics are interrelated and this is a really really important process so if you can't tell um, I'm a big fan of condensing and making one page summaries so I would do that before my exam and that was kind of like at the start of my study for the exam and then it's just the same as before memorize look cover write check practice 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 questions go ask your teacher the questions that you're not sure how to do in the practice questions Questions, more practice, look, cover, write, check, memorize, look, cover, write, check, go through your notes, practice, practice, practice papers, go and ask your teacher the questions that you don't understand, more practice papers, ask questions, look, cover, write, check, memorize, practice papers, ask questions, like keep, just keep it and yeah, just you just have to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that and before waste exams you're probably going to get bored out of your brain just doing this over and over and over again for every single subject. But by going through all of this stuff so, 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 so many times, by the time you get to the exam, like, it's so embedded in your memory, it's not even hard, like, it's not even hard to get the information out of your brain and put it onto paper. It's just like, it happens and that's what you want in the exam. You just want to get in that zone and you're just writing and you're just like, yeah. So by doing all of this stuff a million and one times, it is so frustrating and like, you'll get so so sick of it you will get very sick of this study like in the final few weeks before your waste exams or your hsc exams or your vce or whatever they are called um but you just have to push through and keep going because you're on the final stretch and literally before you know it it'll be done like before you know it it will just be over and then you won't have to study any of that stuff again unless you study it at university but like you won't have to <laughs> you know what i mean um so yeah, you just have to really push through and really grind. Um, and the biggest thing that I would, yeah, the biggest thing is practice questions. Just do so many practice papers, so many practice papers, so many practice papers, and make sure you're asking your teachers all of the questions that you don't understand. And then also just keep going through your notes, go through, like alternate between going through your one page summaries for each topic, your one page summary for the whole, um, for the whole subject and then the like 10 pages of just normal notes that you wrote for each topic so alternate between going through all of those because obviously some of the th information like the information that ends up on your final one page summary for the whole subject isn't going to have like absolutely everything in full blown out detail that you learnt so you do want to make sure you're going through your actual written longer written notes just to make sure you're like fully full bottle on everything but yeah just alternate between going through all the different forms of notes that you've written if you've got flashcards go through them as well make sure you're like studying all of your different subjects don't like focus too heavily on one subject and neglect the other ones because you don't know with scaling and stuff even if you think you know which subjects are going to be your top four which ones are going to count for your ATAR you don't because I was doing five subjects and I was pretty sure English was going to be my bottom one and it was my bottom one all year, it was my lowest score all year, and then it ended up being my second highest subject. And that was just kind of due to scaling and just how I didn't waste exams. And it was just, it was weird. I didn't really understand it. But yeah, you don't know what's going to be your bottom subject. I thought English was going to be last and it was second. So make sure you're giving like lots of attention to every subject and yeah, just studying every subject kind of equally. Um, and yeah, lots of practice questions, all the stuff I've said in this video. And then before you know it, you'll be done. And if you've put in hard work, you will look back on yourself um, in a month or in a couple of months and you'll be really, really grateful to yourself and you'll be really, really thankful that you did put in the work um, because like while you're in year 12, it seems like it's going on forever. But then when it's over, you realize it was actually just a short period of time and you kind of wish that you studied harder and so you don't want to look back on year 12 and have regrets that you didn't study harder so make sure to grind during year 12 um and then yeah then it's done and then you're on to university or TAFE or going into a job or whatever you're doing with the next chapter of your life um year 12 goes fast so make the most of it both in terms of having fun but also studying hard Okay, so that is all the information and advice that I have for this video, but I am going to make a video coming very, very soon 
on like how I made my study timetables and how long I studied for each day during school and on the weekends and during exam season. Um, so yeah, I get lots of questions about how long I study for, how long should you study for and how do you make your study timetables. Do you do like half an hour of each subject or do you do like two hours of a subject and then two hours of another subject or like how did I structure my study timetable, how long did I study for, all of those sorts of questions I'm going to answer in a video coming up very soon and I will also make a video on how I made my notes for year 11 and 12 um, even though I already do have videos about that on my channel but I still get questions about it so I'll make another video. So yeah, those are two videos that will be coming your way very soon but also make sure to comment down below and let me know if you have any other video suggestions about kind of the this stuff that I've been talking about, you know, like year 12, ATAR, stuff like that. If you have any questions or video suggestions, make sure to let me know by commenting down below. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see all of the videos that I've got coming out and also all of the videos that I've already filmed. Um, I've had this YouTube channel for almost three years now and I've been filming and uploading consistently through year 11 and 12. Um, so I filmed like my whole journey through year 11 and 12. I vlogged my waste exams, I vlogged my mock exams and I filmed all of my study advice and everything um, and I'm still filming videos now obviously so yeah there's a wealth of knowledge on my channel I think I've got like 150 videos up on my channel now which is a lot so yeah go check some of them out um, and yeah subscribe to my channel please and turn the bell on the notification bell if you want to be notified when you upload first because currently I'm going to give a shout out to the person who is like the best at commenting first. Stella Morgan is the best at commenting first she comments first on like most of my videos um so thank you Stella I really appreciate you and your comments are so so nice and they always make me really happy um but I think Stella has her notification bell turned on because she is so quick as soon as I upload there's like a comment there and I'm like whoa like good reaction time um so yeah if you want to try and rival Stella for being the first commenter then make sure to turn the notification bell on as well cool Thank you for watching this video. I hope you got something useful out of it. Um, and good luck for year 11 and 12, if you're in year 11 and 12. Um, yeah, I hope it goes well. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go now because I feel like I've talked enough in this video. <laughs> um, bye. <laughs> I can't end my videos. Okay, what am I going to say? Um, I, need to say I should say, like, goodbye in a different language each... Um, each video. I'm gonna Google goodbye in Spanish. Oh, it's adios. I said adios in another video. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know that was Spanish. <laughs> oh, obviously I didn't watch enough Dora the Explorer. Goodbye in Italian. Adio. That's kind of boring. Adio, adio, ciao. I can say ciao. Ciao. <laughs> No, maybe I should just... I, uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, bye. Oh, <laughs> the whole time, the whole time, um, you have been balanced on this mattress. Like, this is our table under here. But this is our futon that we have. Um, and it's airing out on this table. But it's really squishy. So it was, like, really hard to balance the tripod. So it's, like, behind the scenes of the video. And here's my hairbrush that I have here. Because I brush my hair, like... Oh, it's kind of gross. Got my hair on it. Um, but I brush my hair just before I film <laughs> the video because otherwise it just goes like you know um, my hair's also looking really like weird today, not sure why Um, but yeah, okay adios, ciao, bye